So I finally ran fast in practice and I'm happy about that. But leading up to that, I was being tested a little bit with an injury and some other issues. So here we're going to talk about the last week and a half of training and hopefully you can get something out of it. Now, starting with uh, October 18th, it was a Tuesday. I went to the gym. I had done a little bit of acceleration work the day before. Went to the gym on the 18th. I started with uh, split squats on the Smith machine just to work sort of a deeper position in a split position, but without having to deal with balance because I tend to have adductor issues and I feel like sometimes I'm not able to get into a sort of a low position when I come out of the blocks. So doing the Smith machine split squat is a good way to expose my body to being loaded in that deeper position, but without feeling unbalanced or having any issues with stability. Then I went into pin squats, which I like to use just for sort of a general explosive strength stimulus. And I paired that with band accelerated jumps just to work on a faster jumping variation, work on getting off the ground very quickly and feeling reactive off the ground. Following that, I did hang cleans. And about a week prior to this, I had told uh, my friend Kyle, who you, you've seen him online as not a jumper. I told him, you know, I need to be careful with these hang cleans because I'm concerned that I'm going to hurt my arm. Well, sure enough, on this day, I felt okay at 135, 185, 225. Then I went up to 255, which is far below my max, and sure enough, boom, I strained my brachialis, which is an elbow flexor. It hurt really bad. I didn't have full range of motion. Strength was nowhere to be found. I couldn't lift anything. So I thought to myself, dang, this really sucks. You know, if my elbow flexor is hurt, how am I going to sprint? So I took the next day off. My arm hurt. Worked on, you know, I did some ice. I did some other things to try and eliminate the pain a little bit. Following that, on the 20th, I did a pool workout where I focused mainly on some hip range of motion stuff, leg swings, uh, hip circles, things like that in the pool. Following day, I took the day off, and then on that Saturday, I decided I would test out sprinting. So I got to the track, and I thought, well, I'll start with resisted sprints because they're a little bit slower, and they give me an opportunity to see how is my arm feeling, and am I going to be able to do non-resisted sprints at a high velocity. So I did 3 by 30 meters with resistance using the Exergenie, sort of a moderate load. And I could tell that my arm was definitely not fully healed yet. Regardless, I did not heed the warning, and I decided to do a 50 meter sprint. I ran one sub-maximally. My arm felt okay, but it was hurting. So then I went back for one more sprint, and sure enough, I could not run fast. I was able to, you know, turn my legs fairly well, but my arm range of motion was really limited, and it just hurt really bad after that. But, you know, I said, okay, let's just let go of this day, let's move on, throw some ice on it, do whatever I can to take some pressure off of it, get some good sleep, and come back the next day for a lift. So the next day I woke up, my arm felt a lot better than it did the day before, and I went to the gym. Now, this week on the 23rd Sunday, I was starting an intensification cycle. So the goal here is to increase the intensity of the sprints I'm doing, increase the velocity of the lifts that I'm doing, focus on more of a sprint specific range of motion, so not going full depth in the squats, ATG squats type of thing, but instead working on drop squats. Now the goal with drop squats is for me, I pick my feet up off the ground, I let myself drop as fast as I can, and then I slam my feet into the ground and try to reverse the bar up as fast as I can. Now right when my feet hit the ground, I can't immediately drive the weight up, but there's a period of time where there's a sort of a super maximal eccentric where I'm fighting, I'm resisting that load going down, and then I'm able to launch it back up. I did the same thing with good mornings, but I did them at a much lower load to work on more of a, a velocity type of uh, hinging activity because I want to get my glutes and my hamstrings better in that hinging type of motion. But I don't want to do it slow, I want to do it at a higher velocity. So I did good mornings at a light load. Then I did some two up, one down leg curls. Um, once again, focusing on that eccentric loading, super maximal eccentric loading in the knee flexors. So I had one sort of quad dominant exercise, the drop squats. Then I had a posterior chain dominant exercise with the good mornings and a sort of a hip dominant hamstring activity. And then the two up, one down leg curls are a knee dominant or a knee flexor dominant hamstring exercise. Once again, looking for a super maximal eccentric. Between the drop squats and the good mornings, I did do some uh, single leg box jumps, focusing on more of a reactive type of jump. So I'm standing there on one leg, I pick my foot up, I strike the ground and jump up onto the box, trying to have as low of a ground contact time as possible. Now, since I had done a lot of posterior chain work and because my arm was still hurt, I decided to take two days of complete rest so that I could let 
my hamstrings and glutes, you know, have that soreness go away, as well as let my arm heal up so that I could try to sprint in the middle of the week. So I took the 24th and the 25th off. Then on the 26th, I decided to go out to the track and do a little workout. My goal was to do some, you know, moderate distance sprinting, like 50 to 60 meters. But to warm up for that, I did uh, wicket sprints. And I did those over about 30 meters. I had 10 wickets out. And I went from 190 centimeters up to 230 centimeters on the wickets. I noticed when I was doing the wickets that I was sort of crashing with my left leg. My left leg has had some hamstring issues, which is one reason why I'm doing the good mornings and the two up, one down leg curls. So when I have a hamstring issue, I notice I tend to crash more on that leg because if your hamstring has any type of injury or just a, a spot of tightness or soreness or something like that, then there's gonna be some inhibition with hip extension as your leg is swinging through the air. And the result of that is that your foot will sort of crash into the ground because you're sort of waiting for the ground rather than actively swinging it straight down and attacking the ground. So I noticed in my wickets that I wasn't quite attacking the ground very well, but by the end of the wickets, I was able to get that to happen and have the foot land in the right spot with more of an active strike into the ground. And this is one reason why you might want to film yourself at practice. So that way you can look at that video and see, okay, is my ground contact good? Is my posture good? Is my rhythm good? If they're, if they're good, then awesome. But if there's an issue there, you can correct that in practice. And if you don't have a coach, then sometimes you might have to put your coaching hat on, look at that film and see if there's anything to change. So I went home, got some food, went to sleep, woke up the next day and I felt particularly good. I felt better than I have in a while. I don't know exactly what it was, but I think the combination of keeping the sprinting volume low, keep, keeping the intensity relatively high, but not blasting the sprints at 100% effort set me up to where my nervous system was ready to go. I hadn't, you know, worn out my tissues like my, you know, muscles and tendons by doing a super high volume workout the day before. So I woke up ready to go. So I decided to go to the track, get a nice thorough warm up and see how see how things felt. It's been a little bit colder lately, so I got to make sure I'm warming up well and also to stay healthy, avoid injury. You got to make sure you're warming up well, hitting good ranges of motion in your warm up, hitting different directions of movement, things like that. So after my warm up I did a couple pop outs out of blocks just to, you know, double check that I could do block starts that day. Then I went into a 10 meter block start, um, a 20 meter block start, and I looked at the times and the times were relatively better than they usually are uh, on my first couple sprints. So that tells me if I, if I run well on my first couple starts when I'm still kind of in the ending stage of my warm up, then I know I can run fast that day. So I thought to myself, okay, let's lengthen out the cones to 60 meters. I'll, I'll run 160 sub maximally just to make sure that I can handle upright sprinting considering I had done it the day before as well. Once I ran that first 60, I felt pretty good. The time was okay, you know, I wasn't running all out, but I ran about 7-1 and that told me, okay, you can run fast today. So let's do 160 meter sprint fast and then we'll shut down the workout, whether it's fast or slow, you know, whatever it is, that's okay. I'll, I'll be at peace with it, but let's just see how it feels. So I got in the blocks, got my mind right, and I went, you know, let's send it. So I go, get done with the rep, felt pretty good, felt pretty fast, felt like I lost my technique a little bit at the end of the sprint, but that's okay, because I haven't been doing a lot of speed or speed endurance work lately, so the technique later in the sprint will develop over time. That's something that I know I can get better at just as a, resu a result of doing some top speed work. But I went and I looked at the time, and to my surprise, I actually ran pretty fast. So to 30 meters, I ran 393. To 40 meters, I ran 491. To 50 meters, I ran 590. And to 60 meters, I ran 694. At that point, I shut down the session because I didn't want to burn myself out and I did want to go to the gym later. But seeing those times, especially those acceleration times, like at 30, 40, and 50 meters, that was really exciting to me because, you know, when you go through a period of time where either you're dealing with injuries or sickness or things like that and you're not running very fast, it can be a little demoralizing. So this was kind of a breakthrough moment for me in this off season because this is very encouraging to see in October that in you know during a time where i'm maybe not in the best overall state because of a, pre a little injury i had or having to take extra time off or whatever i was able to run fast so i think because i did a low volume sprint session at 95 to 98 percent i was able to get my system revved up get my body you know in the in the mode of sprinting nail down some technique you know aspects that i wanted to work on but not burn myself out so much so that i could come back the next day do an even lower volume sprint session, but run it much faster than the day before. 
After that, I decided to go to the gym and continue on with the reactive strength work. So went to the gym. Once again, I did those uh, reactive drop squats. I worked up to 225. I paired that with the single leg jumps onto the box, the single leg reactive box jump, which I like it because the shin angle where you're, that you're striking at when you do these jumps, you are in sort of a mid acceleration position with the shin angle. And that's something that I feel I've always needed to work on is the middle of acceleration. I tend to have a good 10, kind of a weak 10 to 20, and then I'll start to get faster again. So working on jumps and other exercises with that sort of slightly forward shin angle, I think is good for me. So I did those. Then I went back to those uh, good mornings that are fairly fast. I only went up to 115 pounds, but I did them in a very reactive and, and fast manner. And then I paired that with a hinge jump, where you do the same motion as a good morning, but you finish it with a jump. Now the reason I did this was because I want to get the, the glutes and the hamstrings involved in some type of vertical jumping activity, because when we sprint, you know, we have to use the glutes and ha the hamstrings, and we have to use them to generate vertical force. We have to be able to swing that leg straight down to the ground and do it very aggressively. So instead of doing a normal counter movement jump where it's mostly you know driven by the quads, I wanted to do a jump variation that was more driven by the posterior chain. So I did those hinge jumps and they actually felt really good. Um, following that, I did some single leg hops, some drop, drop jumps, things like that, just to finish off the session. Then I went home. So today I'm taking the day off, letting my body recover. We'll see about tomorrow, but I think there's a couple lessons to learn from all this. You know, first of all, if you get injured, you have to give yourself time to recover. So after I got injured between the injury and today, I took one, two, three, four complete rest days. I also had a pool day, which was basically a rest day because it was a very low intensity workout. So I've had five off days since I got hurt on the 18th. I've had one, two, three, four four workouts in that time. So one lesson is give yourself the opportunity to recover, especially if your goal is to intensify your training. If you're going into a period where you want to have more intense training and you want to run faster, you need to be recovered. Another thing is that you can't necessarily expect to run fast the first day coming back from a number of days off, because like I said, you might feel a little flat, your nervous system might not be that tuned into sprinting. So that's another lesson to learn. Third, Pick exercises in the gym that you're not going to get hurt from. So I knew I was going to get hurt in the hand cleans. I just had an intuitive feeling that I was going to have a, an elbow related injury from doing the hand cleans. And I didn't heed that intuitive warning that I had given myself. So you need to listen to those things. Take my advice as someone who struggles to take their own advice. Take my advice. Do not do an exercise that you feel is going to hurt you. If it gives you problems, find another exercise. There's no magical exercise out there. All of the things we do in the gym are general. So if hang cleans are bothering you, do a hex bar jump, do a dumbbell jump, do a regular jump, do a drop squat, do something else. You don't have to use an Olympic lift variation if you're having trouble with it. So I think that's another lesson to learn. Last, you know, if you get hurt, don't get too down. Don't feel like it's the end of the world. Your body is amazing. Your body will, will, it will work miracles. It will be able to heal itself if you give it the opportunity. If you don't repeatedly stress something that's hurt, you will get better. You will heal up. And if you do the right things at the right time, you'll feel better. So as you're going through your prep, understand there's no perfect prep. There's no perfect season. There's no perfect program. There's always going to be ups and downs. But if you stay mentally in tune, you keep your emotions in check, you keep training as much as you can without injuring yourself, you will improve. So hopefully this can be motivating to you guys, give you some insight into how I'm training at the moment, as well as show you that just because you have a little you know, bump, on, bump in the road um, on your journey to run faster, that isn't the end of the world, and you can get through it. If I can get through it, I'm just some normal dude out here training, then you can get through it too. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope all is well in your world, but that's it for now. So this is Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com and AthleteX, signing off.